Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I've got another one page wonder for you. And it is made, you start with just a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. We're gonna trim it down to the size that it prints for the printable. But you can make this with any paper you have on hand. This is to give you guys though another fun one page wonder idea that you can really make, I think, look fabulous depending on how what you choose to put inside and how you decorate it um i am using my fall gratitude journaling kit because i wanted to give you guys another idea of how to use some of these digitals if you don't necessarily want like a great big journal or even the pocket size mini journal you just want something a little smaller maybe something to give to a friend that isn't really into a lot of heavy duty journaling yet, or maybe wants to try out practicing gratitude, I think this would be a great gift. It'll also be a nice happy mail, see how skinny it is. And it would be great to put into a larger journal even, or just to coordinate with a journal you're making. So again, you could use this kit, I'll have it linked for you, or you can use whatever papers you have. I think this project would work well um, with any of those. So let me, get us started and then we'll make one and decorate it together. So again, I printed one of the full size journaling pages in the fall gratitude kit on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And then there was that white trim around. Let me grab a sheet. Um, a lot of times when you print them, you know, they, they have some kind of border around them. Well, when I cut the border off of this one, it left us with a piece of paper that is 10, and a quarter inches long and then eight inches wide okay so that's what we're gonna work with I did print on both sides I have a real neutral print on the back so that we can decorate right those types of things on it so the first thing you're gonna do the first cuts is on that eight inch side you are going to cut it I'm gonna Look at my notes so I don't misspeak. You're gonna cut it at four and a half inches. So you may wanna look at your pattern and decide which way, you know, which piece do you want to be the main, this is gonna be the main part of my little folio right here. It's 10 and a quarter by four and a half inches. Okay, so that's your first cut. Then you're gonna take the piece that's left over and it is three and a half inches by 10 and a quarter. And you wanna cut this one on that 10 and a quarter inch side at, at four and a half. So again, I looked at mine and I flipped it this way and then I cut it at four and a half inches because I, it's how, where I wanted to cut it. <laughs> if you wanted to cut on this side, you know, you would put it in your paper cutter. If you want it on that side, four and a half. If you wanted to cut this way, four and a half. I hope that makes sense. So just look at the pattern in your paper. It's not that big of a deal, but um, you know, just be aware of it. We are gonna do something with this piece a little bit later in the tutorial, so set it aside. You're gonna need it. All right, now we're gonna do some pretty simple scoring. So I'm gonna get out my scoreboard. And on this first piece, on that 10 and a quarter inch side, we are going to score it at four and three eighths. Don't let that scare you. On my scoreboard, that's just the third little line over. Um, so each of these lines is an eighth. You get to the second one, right? That's a quarter inch, but four and three eighths is in between four and a quarter and four and a half. Okay, so score at four and three eighths, and then eight and three quarter inches. I'm going to have all of the measurements and the scoring in the description of the video for you, so you can refer to that. You don't have to um, frantically try to take notes if that is helpful for you. All right, now you are going to take, not that piece, you are going to take the piece that measures four and a half by three and a half set the larger piece aside on the three and a half inch side you are going to score this at three inches so that you're just going to have this little half inch piece like that that's going to be our hinge to 
glue it into our folio. All right, that's all of our scoring. So I'm gonna put the scoreboard away. Now, let's neatly fold, or carefully fold, <laughs> on the score lines on the main part of the folio. And mine turned out with the tree in a very pretty place, I think, on the front. This is gonna be that side tuck, and I am leaving it open just because I liked having the ribbons and, and having them stick out, but you we could glue both, and I believe these would still fit in there. You just have to be a little careful with your glue. But I just left mine open, so this is going to be a front tuck. Put these back in here. And on this side, we are gonna put that larger pocket, but before we do that, we are gonna attach our one little page. And to make this easier for all of us, including me, to see, we're gonna do a little bit of inking. I'm using my Distress Ink and in Walnut. Guys, I'm excited. I'm gonna ink a little while I chat. I just ordered myself, um, well, I ordered a new walnut. <laughs> Um, just because I really feel like for some reason re-inking it hasn't been doing the trick enough for me. It's just not juicy enough. I think I leave it open too much. But anyway, I got a new walnut, but then I got a couple of other new browns. So we'll we'll try those out in some upcoming videos once they arrive. I believe um, I already have several. I have like vintage photo, but I wanted to try a couple others. I can't remember the ones that I ordered. But when they get here, I'll show them to you and we'll I'll use them in a video. Okay. Again, inking is optional. Ink as much or as little as you want. And you can always add more later. But the big thing is, is I wanted to get that score line inked for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, before I add my glue. I do like, this is optional. I do like to just miter these corners just a little. I'm just snipping off uh, a, a small angle so that when I glue this in, you don't, act, if it's not folded perfectly, you don't accidentally or see a little sliver of paper. You can always trim it off if, if, if that happens. A lot of times when we're folding paper, even when we're very careful and we measure, sometimes there's just that little sliver. Okay, so I am going to add glue to this tab and then I'm going to place it just past the fold line, the score line there. I'm going to use my Line Co. brand PVA wet white glue. Uh, a lot of the supplies, not all of them, but many of the supplies that I use are in my Amazon storefront. And that's linked for you again in the description. It's an affiliate link, which means Amazon pays me a few pennies if you make a purchase. If you don't, no big deal. And it's at no cost to you. I always like people to understand that um, Amazon pays for it, not the customer. So um, if you want to check out some of my supplies, have at it. If not, don't worry about it. All right, we are going to add glue. I'm going to add mine again just to this bottom edge to make just more of like a tuck spot so that if I want to embellish the top of my journaling prompt cards or whatever else I choose to put in here, I can. And again, if you're not doing yours in the gratitude theme and you aren't necessarily going to have like little prompts to help someone gratitude journal. You know, you can put tags, you can put pictures, you can put recipes, you could put a letter, photos, you know, whatever you want. So just kind of think about how you want to use that pocket. Now we have this page and I'm doing a belly band for mine and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And then we're going to add a pocket here. And that is what this last piece of paper is for. So this piece, it's five and three quarters by three and a half. So we are going to cut it down to four and a quarter because that is the width of this panel. Okay, and it can be even a titch, titch less than four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut mine at four and a quarter and then I'm cutting this one to be two inches wide, a, a piece two inches wide. So again, I just kind of decide 
which piece do I want it to be? This is going to be my pocket. So this is going to be my pocket. And now I have this piece to be my belly band. Now I left mine nice and wide like this on the original page. And then I actually added a little flip too, just because I thought that was fun and I liked it. I used this piece to make the flip. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll make it the same. But if you want, if you want a skinnier belly band, you can trim this now to whatever width you want. Right now it's two inches. So, you know, if you want it to be one inch or one and a half inches, you have options. I'm sorry, not this piece, this piece. Goodness gracious, y'all. It's already one and a half inches. This is your big pocket. Don't cut that piece up. <laughs> that is your big pocket. And this is your belly band. Why don't I make it a little skinnier? It's one and a half. Let's make it a one inch belly band just for fun. And then that leaves us this nice little sliver. I'm sure I can find something to do with that too. Okay, so for the belly band, I'm just going to ink it. And you can decorate, you know, the belly bands if you want to. Like I said, I'm going to do that little flip and show you that. Uh, I'm going to notch the big pocket to give it a little interest. And you can see, see that it's a pocket or what's in there. Um, the kit that I'm using also has little pieces of ephemera. And I have some of them cut out in case I want to use them on a few of the tags. And I have a few of the journaling cards and then some of the affirmations. So I've shown you guys this kit. There's quotes, all kinds of stuff. But that's, again, what I'm using because I, it's such a big kit. Unless you're going to make a great big journal, um, it gets a little overwhelming. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Or what else can I do with this? And not everybody wants, um, you know, a, a great big journal. And especially... You know, if there's somebody you're thinking about or they've had a lot going on in their lives and you know the practice of, you know, showing gratitude and being thankful and grateful for the things we already have in our lives might be helpful for them. A big journal might be a little overwhelming. So this might this might be just an option, you know, to help somebody. I'm being very careful with my application of glue on the belly band just at the top and the bottom because I want to make sure I can tuck one of these little tags in here, and it does fit. If it's fine, I need to let the glue dry, but you don't want your glue to come down too much or then it won't fit. You can always chop it off if that happens to you or put something smaller in there. All right, now these, um, when they print, they have a slightly rounded corner, but sometimes I like to just put them on my paper trimmer and chop them up, and it's really okay uh, to do that, right? And then if you want to, you can come back through and round the corners. Now this this corner chomper is, is a chomper, and it will do multiple layers like this. Um, if you have to do yours one or two at a time, that works too. I think I need to empty mine again, but there we go. And if they're a little rough, I'll just fix them or trim them up as I go. But I kind of like them being uh, the corners a little rounded. These, these didn't get cut. Much easier if I only do a few layers. <laughs> okay, so again, if, if it makes your life easier instead of hand cutting these to get those little corners, lay them on your paper trimmer, chop them up. There's nobody telling you you can't do it that way. And then you can round the corners if you want them round or leave them square. All right. We have a pocket. We have a belly band. We have a page. It's cute. And we have another tuck spot. So now we just get to decorate. I did use on the other one um, one of these little tabs. And I think it's so cute. So we're going to use one here too. And I'm going to cut it out. I think I've shown you guys this, but in case you missed it, and this works with any shape of tags that you get that are, um, these are just a round one, but no matter what the shape is, th this little strategy will work. Instead of trying to now cut these curves, what I do is I um, cut along the straight edge and now I'm just folding it in half because that's how the tab's going to work, right? Fold it in half. And then I do the cut this way. That way I know both sides match. And I just think it's much easier than trying to cut and then make them match later. 
and like I said, this will work on a different, different style or shape of tab. So where do I want to put a little tab? On the one I made as a sample, I put it on this little page and it was really cute. We could also put it on the cover if we wanted to. I think I'm gonna put it on this page. And it has a cute leaf pattern. You can decide where you want it. I think I put it more towards the middle on the sample just because of the pattern of the paper. But I'm just gonna glue this one right here. One side and then the other. And again, use whatever paper you have, decorate however you want. And, oh, here, the way I did the little flippy, it's not necessary, but it was kind of cute, is I just took that last little piece of paper that was left over once I kept the pocket in the belly band, and I just folded down a smidge. What is that, like maybe a quarter of an inch? Just enough to have a tab. Add a little ink, and then I'm just gonna glue it down by the tab right at the top, the top of the page. Cuteness. <laughs> and again, no, no reason for it, except I thought it was cute. And you know, we could add, why don't we, ooh, this one with a little swing. It looks very inviting and very relaxing. Like I would love to curl up with my journal or a book or something. I'm gonna put that right there too. Um, you know, so just, make it yours. I'm going to look at the front now and think about what I might want to put on the front. I put a piece of lace and one of these affirmations on the front of the sample. We could also put a quote. How about we do that? We'll put gratitude turns what we have into enough. Again, that, that concept and idea that sometimes is really hard to learn and then to practice, um, especially when life is so busy and there's so many things competing for our attention, right? <laughs> and there we go. We'll put that on the front. I think that'll look nice right here. And again, a lot of times I tear these. If you want it to be a little smaller, you can cut just the words without the little swirly. Again, lots of options. I was thinking about, for some reason, I've been thinking a lot about just being kind, right? And generous and those types of things to the people in our lives and even to strangers or the people we meet. And I remember something that I used to tell my kids all the time when they were younger. And you know how sometimes children will... Um, sometimes, well, all of us do, but speak without thinking. And, and sometimes the things we say can hurt people's feelings and that's not what we meant. And so I remember, especially when they were really young, trying to help them understand this concept. And I think I'm going to put a piece of ribbon on here or a bow. And so I would always say, well, the first thing you want to think about before you say something is, is it true? Because I mean, if it's not true, like, why are we even saying it? Right? Like it doesn't even need to come out of our mouth if it's not true. And then, is it helpful or is it hurtful? And sometimes you want to say something just because it's your opinion or you think people, you know, might want to hear what, what you're thinking. But a lot of times, um, that's helpful or that's hurtful, right? It's not helpful. I don't know why I cut the ribbon like that one. I was thinking about doing like a, a little strip and a bow maybe. So anyway, I'm going to tie a bow and then we're going to glue this down. And... So the idea of, okay, so is it true? Is it helpful? Is it hurtful? And then even if you think it's helpful, like you really think they need to know this, trying to find then a way to be graceful, generous, kind, you know, with your comment. So again, and when they were little, one thing that helped them, like that they could kind of understand is, okay, if you think somebody smells and you know, okay, so you stink, you smell, right? You don't smell good, you smell bad. Um, is it true? Well, it might be true, right? Like, yeah, I can tell objectively you don't smell good. Um, I'm gonna use my two-sided tape to stick this down. And so, 
But then is it helpful or is it hurtful? Well, you know, there's nothing they can do about it in that moment. Like maybe they, um, I don't know, the, the garbage exploded on them in, in the lunchroom at school. I don't know. Um, or they stepped in something or somebody in their class threw up and they got, you know, it, and now they, they don't smell very good, right? Um, it might be true, and it, but it's not helpful to point it out, especially when there's nothing they can do about it, right? Um, and if, if it's like a body odor problem, okay, teenagers, we've moved on a little bit in age. It's like, okay, is it true? Yes, but is it helpful or hurtful? Well, you know, it might be helpful if you can find a way to share that feedback with someone who's a good friend of yours if they don't realize it. Like maybe their gym clothes need to be washed because they have some body odor and they hadn't really noticed it or realized it. You know, find a way then to be helpful and not hurtful and kind, right? So anyway, I for, for whatever reason, this has been going on in my mind a lot lately and I wanted to just talk about it because I think we have such an opportunity in this kind of space and platform when people are, uh, there are creators like me out there, you know, making content and videos because it's something we love and it's our business or it's our hobby, whatever. And then people choose to be rude, right? And I try to remember when people are being rude, there's probably something going on in their lives. All right, I'm going to ink some of these and we're going to fold them up and put them in the pockets and maybe add a ribbon. So very easy embellishments and things to add into our folio. So somebody, a very kind lady, told me something, I guess Tim Holtz puts or says in almost all of his like releases when he's releasing new products or something. And, and her point was, you know, he's so famous and he has such a talented group of designers that work for him and they get, they still get people being rude or saying ugly things. And if you don't like something, just watch something else or move on go to somebody else's channel. But I guess he says, and now that I think about it, I think I have heard him say it, but something to the effect of if you uh, don't have something nice to say, Find something nice to say, right? If you can't think of something nice to say, find something nice to say. Because all that does is spread joy. It makes people feel good. Um, all of those things. And that's kind of as I think about this practice of gratitude and what makes us um, really appreciate the gifts and the blessings in our lives is talking about those, right? Not complaining. Talking about the good things. Finding the joy. All of those things. So, it reminded me too of, um, for many years, I have not had to talk to my now young adult children about, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it hurtful? Um, you know, it's kind of like, stop, ask yourself some questions first before you say something that might, might hurt somebody. Um, uh, I don't know. It kind of came back to me and we're, I think most people that watch my videos are probably adults. So you would think we wouldn't need to have that conversation. But anyway, it's not just about that. It's like everything in life. Okay, and you guys have been awesome and so supportive. Thank you for your sweet, sweet, encouraging words. All right, I'm just folding these in half and I'm sticking them in. I think I made, I, I put four in the original one. I didn't want to get it, again, overwhelming or overstuffed. Uh, we'll see how, how it looks. Um, six might be okay. We'll see. Uh, and then here in the belly band, why don't we make this little tag will do I want to just leave it for someone to write nope I'm gonna put a, one of the affirmations on there because I haven't used one of these yet so how about be grateful every day um and I do I have so many things to be grateful for and that's what I like focusing on all right here we go so if you haven't already and you are enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Give this one, if you can, a quick thumbs up. And if you have time, a comment, even better. Thank you. I love hearing from you guys. It makes my day. And I am going to get out my little circle punch and find something. I'm going to use one of these, I think, to just punch a little circle out to cover that up with. I kind of want it to be very flat to go under the belly band. I just need to trim so that my little punch will reach it. Cute. 
I don't know, sometimes I think if I say cute as, as I do something, it, it, it reinforces that it's cute or pretty. All right. And I may put something on one of these pockets too, some more words, we'll see. There we go. Just to cover that up or give it a little extra. So I'm gonna put that in there. We have this that can be used as a little journaling spot, that cute little flip. And let me think about this pocket here. On this one, I put a quote, but I kind of want to put the be kind to yourself. That one always kind of screams my name when I'm working with, with this sheet. <laughs> and this is the one that prints kind of a half sheet size in the full kit. But you can get these affirmations if you haven't already as a freebie on Buy Me a Coffee. And I'll link that for you in the description too. And um, and and it's a they they print larger. It's a full sheet, same same words, you know, same affirmations. But you can just print it at a smaller percentage size if you want them smaller. All right, let's stop there. Maybe staple on a ribbon or two, and then I think it'll be done. So we'll do two polka dots, and how about two with the gingham? I really like gingham, and I don't use it that often. And I cut these each approximately, like, tip to tip, two inches. And I just think it's a cute size for this. And I'm just going to staple them on with this little tiny attacher. It's the little bitty staples that I think are cute. And you can do them on either, you know, the, the left hand, the right hand, depending on like how far over the print goes on the card. And again, if you're if you don't have this kit, just put some little journaling, some or some blank journaling paper uh, in your in your folio for somebody to use if you want to. Um, or whatever your heart desires. <laughs> Did I, I put the two gingham in one and I got the two polka dots, so I'm probably going to switch them and bring one of these. Yeah, I'll do it like this. There we go. And this one, I'm going to just put on here. And then I'll have them. There we go. All, all kinds of different places. Cute. All right, two made with the same paper kit, but they look just a smidge different because of the words and how I chose to decorate them and the papers I chose, but they definitely coordinate. And see, it's still pretty skinny, even with the staples and the ribbon for a happy mail to put into a larger journal or just a standalone, tuck it down inside of a gift or give it to a friend. You know, leave it somewhere. Scatter random, random acts of kindness. It'll be fun. <laughs> I hope you guys like it. I hope you have a great day. Until next time, thank you for watching.